So I'm going to tie a Catskill Adams today, but my main point is to start demonstrating proportions and how important they are on all your flies, whether they're nymphs, soft tackles, or dry flies, or emergers. So with the Catskill pattern, it's a little easier for me to demonstrate the actual proportions for this dry fly. So the first thing I want to do is, is I want to take the same hook I'm tying on, which is a dry fly shank. And the reason I say a dry fly shank, it's not 1x long. It's the exact length that I'm looking for for my proportions. The hook gap is relevant to the hook shank. So the first thing that I, it's not an extra size in, in hook gap like a lot of these competition hooks are today. So what I want to do is, is I'm going to take this silver magic marker and I'm going to, for references, I'm going to take and mark the exact length of my eye up here on the hook that I'm tying. So I'm going to kind of touch it and this is going to become my reference on where not to tie to. I want to keep it clean and I want to keep my head in the game here on the hook eye and where my head's going to be. So if you can see what I've done is, is I've created an, the length of my hook eye. Now then, this is not something you have to do, but it's something that'll give you a reference in your mind, in your eye, and where it really comes into play is if you're like me and you'll tie one pattern on a size, say, 10, and then you'll drop to a size 18, your mind and your eye can't quite adjust to the length of that eye. And you have a tendency for your first one or two flies, if you move up in size, to have too small of a head. Or if you move down in size, you'll encroach on the eye because you... you uh, don't quite have those eye proportions. So I'm going to start my thread right here at that hook point and I'm going to wrap forward to about a third and then I'm going to wrap back. Now what I'm doing is, is I'm putting down a nice thread foundation for where I'm going to tie my wings in. And so on a Catskill pattern, it calls for a grizzly hackle wing. And I've seen a lot of guys tie these wings with big fat squared off wings. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. The first thing I want to do is, is I'm going to go into my hackle, my cape, and I'm going to look for them short guys down here at the bottom. Not the real long guys up here at the top, but the short guys. And the short guys are going to kind of give me a tip that is going to be pretty much kind of wide, almost to the point. If you can see that feather right there, I really like that feather for a wing. So I'm going to um, pluck him out. And in the meantime, I'm looking for a mate. And so from here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this one here as a mate. Well, not anymore. We just broke it off. So let's look for another one. And let's hold this one up for a minute get another reference. Uh, there's one. So reach down near the pelt and break it off. Now here's something else about taking them off down there. You have a lot more curvature in that feather versus coming off at a higher end, okay? So I also now want to talk about something that I'm sure everybody here knows, but you have a dull side and a shiny side. So what I want to do is, is I want to take my thumb and I want to turn the shiny side to me and thus then I can splay out all those barbules if you can see that and what's happening is is I'm not um, bending them inward outward getting a funky bend on those barbs every one of them is evenly splayed out and that's because I ran my thumb down the shiny side of that of that uh, stem and not the dull side so there's just another little tip so the next thing I want to do is, is I'm going to take this wing and I want to measure my proportion and it's going to go from the hook bend to the hook shank right like that and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up a little more to a, uh, a nice shank 
And so what I'm looking at is, is the base of my, my wing is right here at this hook shank. And then the, and the tip is going to hang out just at that eye. So from here now, I'm going to gently strip off all those barbs that I slowly pulled out earlier because I want to tie in a shank with no uh, barbule sticking out the sides. And I'll explain that in a second. So don't break it off, just kind of leave it like that and let's do the second one. So we're going to measure that up and we're going to kind of come here. But first, we're going to take, like I said, and we're going to turn the shiny side to me. And I'm going to take and run my thumb right down. If you're having a hard time on your smaller feathers to find that shiny side, look at the curvature. It's almost always going to curve away from the shiny side. It's going to kind of curve to the dull side. So let's measure. If you can kind of see where I'm at, let's take just a little bit more. Just like that. So notice how I'm not breaking it from the stem because I'm using the stem as a handle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean some of those barbules off again. Be careful not to break your stem if you can. The best way to do this is just kind of let, let it hang and then come back and clean it. Just like that. So now I'm going to reach down and I'm going to get my other feather for my wing and I'm going to put these guys neck and neck and right now what I'm doing is I'm more concerned about the tip length matching up I want them the same length here so I'm moving them around till I get that same length notice that all right so from here I'm going to turn them and go dull or shiny side to shiny side Okay, if you can see that. And now what I want you to also understand, and that is I'm going to now look right there where that naked part of the shank is at. And it's going to be, there's my head. That's why I did it in silver. So right here at the end of my thread is where I want that part of the shank of these feathers to be no barbules and that's going to be where I tie them in so I'm going to start here and I'm going to gently come up pinch and bring it down keeping those feathers right there on top and I'm going to roll them right up I'm going to do one more wrap so now what I want to do is, is I'm going to adjust these just a little this one's a little short there we go and now I'm going to pull them and if you can see, that, that blank shank is right there at the end of my thread. That's where my wings are going to stand up. So I'm going to come right around and keep everybody on top. Notice how they're starting to splay already. Keep them right there. And work your way up using your thread torque to that point. Okay. So now you can kind of see how they are. And it's almost a natural... Uh, bend out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and keep my body nice and clean. I'm going to cut those stems and that's how you put the wings on every single time their length and their uh, no mess to clean up or have to tie out of. Keeping this shank nice and smooth use touching wraps. So now that I'm all the way up to the point where I want my wings to stand up Okay, I'm going to let my thread hang and I'm going to double check and I'm going to pull them up. Yep, this empty part of the shank right here behind my silver is where my hackle is going to go. So now what you don't want to do is go directly behind those stems, but come forward to that silver and then wrap back. Now you're creating a nice smooth jam knot for those wings to stand up just like that. So from here, I want you to notice there's no flaring 
at the base of my wings. There's no mess to clean up whatsoever. And that, that flaring, when you tie these wings in and you catch barbules down here, that will lean forward into your eye and into your head, and then it'll stick up on the sides, creating an issue when you go to tie in your hackle. So let's go ahead and create a nice V. So let's wrap behind them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come forward and go right between and do a nice X. I'm going to come from behind. I'm going to go right between them. If I have to, I'm going to go ahead and clinch it. Come right between them. Well, I pulled. So from here... Let's wrap back again, and this time without me talking. I'm going to come right between that one. I'm going to stand it up, and now I'm going to come between it again from behind, and I'm going to stand it up, thus creating a nice... V. Do your lock-in wrap, one on the front, one on the back. Use the torque of the thread to stand them up wherever you want them. You don't want to cheat here because in your mind you're thinking, oh, my hackle will stand my wings up where I want them. But what happens when you do that is when you fish this fly, the wings will actually go where they want to go after everybody gets wet or you catch one fish with it. So I like the way they're leaning somewhat forward. And now, if you notice, I have a, a very slight bump where I've been going back and forth on my X. So it's very important for my hackle that I come forward again, equal even out my bump, because I definitely don't want that bump there. And now I'm going to come on the back side of that bump, and I'm going to smooth it out. And the reason for that is, is because if you have a bump and you, you wrap your hackle around it, it's going to come out to the sides and lay down. So we don't want that. So now let's wrap back. And what we're going to do now is we're going to lay our thread about where that hook point is at. And we're going to do our tails. Now the tails on the shank, again, should be, like we talked about, it should be the length of the... Uh, shank so the first thing i'm going to do is, is i'm going to find a feather that uh is nice and stiff and is a grizzly so one of the things that i want to mention and that is when you're doing your tails okay don't don't just measure using the stem measure your tail just a wee bit longer so come up here to the shank and put your uh, stem there okay so what I've done is I like that one and now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get another brown hackle and these are uh, hen um, they're long and they're stiff so look for them if you can see that hackle because we want a brown and a grizzly so notice mine's just a wee bit longer right there at the eye and that's what I want and why is that it's because I need that handle uh, to tie on so what happens is you uh, you measure your your uh, tails up and then when you tie them in they become a little bit too short so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those two feathers and I'm gonna put them stem to stem I don't care if they're uh, shiny side or dull side but I'm going to put them stem to stem and I'm going to hold the top. And so now I'm going to kind of blend them together just like that. And the width of my thumb, I'm going to come in and I'm going to strip that off all the way. And when I actually uh, stroked them out, I evened my points up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that stem shaving off so you can see now how I'm holding them. So now I'm going to pinch very gently in between my fingers and start making that bundle. And the goal here is to try and keep everybody the same length. If you can see that. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up a little more. So now I'm going to make sure that my tails 
Yes, that's about it. So I'm going to pinch here. Now notice now where I pinched, I have enough to tie in, and that's because I had an extra long tail length. So now I'm going to go ahead and start on my side. Notice how I'm starting on my side. And I'm going to wrap one, and it's going to come right up on top. Okay. So now I blended my two colors together, and I'm going to hold these right here on top, and I'm going to pick up. And as I wrap back, I want my tails right on top of my hook shank with touching wraps. Be careful of your hook point, and come all the way back, and then make that plumb bob hang right there between where the barb is at and where the point is at. I have enough tail material the proper length. So let's take that hook shank one more time and let's measure it up from about where that bend starts to my hook see the hook eye and the majority stops right there at if you can see that at the uh, hook eye itself let me hold it there and try and rotate so again using my hook here as a uh, reference I'm really good to go so now I'm going to wrap back and I'm going to blend those points from the tag end in. But I don't want them up here, so I'm going to cut them. I do not want them where my hackle's going. So I'm just going to kind of cut them on a slant right there. Well, we got a couple wild ones. Okay, so allow me now to tie it in. And what I've got in my mind is I'm now creating a carrot shape underbody. But I'm not going to go up where my hackle's at. So in other words, I'm stopping my thread about the same length here where my silver's at and the same length here for my hackle, three wraps on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time and create a wee bit of a carrot using my thread as a nice smooth foundation. Okay, if you can see that's starting to farm. So I'm going to let my thread hang right there where I want it to quit. And now I'm going to take my daubing, and I'm using, I'm using a, a gray, which is called far muskrat. And I'm going to do a nice tight wrap of dubbing. And notice that my thread, where it's at, because I'm going to start my dubbing there. Uh, it's a little different compared to a lot of guys, but when I'm tying a dry fly... I'm going to use the body, the dubbing, as a wall to maintain the standing up portion of my hackle. So I've created a little more dubbing on the end, and it gets finer as it goes down, if you can see that. So I'm going to slide this up, making it very tight. There's no, notice how tight my dubbing is on my thread. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my thread right there and create a nice dubbing wall. Notice how heavy it is. And now I'm gonna slowly wrap back, creating that nice taper as I go down. This is giving me the ability to, to control my taper and stop. If you see your tails move as you're wrapping, remove that wrap and start over. So notice now how thin that dubbing is on the thread it's not any bigger than the diameter of my thread and I can wrap back creating a nice taper and now as my thread runs out I can drop right on where my hackles at so now you can see I have a nice tapered body which is now one-third the length of or two-thirds the length of my hook shank and I'm actually going to give it just a little bit more because I believe that length is a little shy so I need to come forward just a little maybe about two wraps but I need to maintain that diameter so I'm going to now come up and I'm going to go ahead and wrap it one more time and then drop right down there we go I like that length Let's make it a little big, nice taper. Blend it all together, and now my naked thread comes right there. Okay, so now what I want to talk about real quick is your hackle 
And I'm going to say this, if you don't know it by now, you need to know this, that your hackle, the stem is actually oblong. So what it is, is it's, it's actually oblong and the barbules come out the sides of the, the width. So if you can see this, that's, that's looking at the stem itself. It's oblong and the long sides of the oblong stem is where the barbules come out on the side of that feather. So with that in mind, now that I'm going to go ahead and tie in my hackle for my um, wrap of hackle, I know that my, my stem is oblong this way, not this way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure it up and I'm going to actually use my wings and I'm going to put that stem right on it. And I'm going to wrap it in that, yep, that's not bad. So now I've got two hen, or hackles the same length, and I'm looking for that sweet spot. So what I mean by a sweet spot is, is you know that your hackle is somewhat tapered to the point. So there's a part of this stem, and again, let's, let's take and go down the, the shiny side, and we can splay them right out. And now then, there we go. There's the length I'm looking for. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strip off. And I know guys cut them because they want those um, little stubs of barbule sticking out to supposedly hold it. So now what I'm going to do is, is knowing that my stem is oblong, so it's flat. If you can see my scissors, I know you can't see the stem, but it's flat on this side, flat on this side. It's pointed on the bottom and pointed on the top. So I don't want to tie it in like this. I want to tie it in flat side to my hook shank. And I'm going to make sure when I tie this in, I've got naked stem here that in my mind, I will get um, a half a wrap to three quarters of a wrap around that shank before those barbules start. So I'm going to go ahead and start right here, and I'm going to extend my, there we go. Notice how I'm pulling it straight up in the direction it's going to wrap. And I'm wrapping back to, I started at the base of my wing, and I wrap back to my dubbing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this stem a little more because I don't want it to encroach on the eye or too much under that head. So now I'm going to pull it up. Yep, it's a little too long still. And now I'm going to come in front of my wings and I'm going to keep that nice foundation. And I'm going to wrap back again. And I'm going to come right behind those wings and I'm going to let my thread hang. And now I can do my brown hackle, which is going to be the exact same thing. I'm using a furnace and I'm looking for a furnace that doesn't have so much black in it, but yet I can get the same proper length as my Grizzly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm looking for a nice furnace, and I'm going to look for that sweet spot again using two sharp. See what I mean? I'm actually using the wing because I want it to come up um, two-thirds of that wing, which would give me the proper two-thirds underneath for my um, hook gap. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is the same thing I did with my Grizzly, and I'm going to find that sweet spot. It's right about there. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this off, and I'm going to pull back, strip, and make sure that those barbs are equal on both sides coming off. And again, remember, it's flat on this side, flat on that side, point and point. So I'm going to lay it straight up, and my thread must have moved for me, and now I'm going to wrap back and come right back where my wings are at. And I'm going to now come under, and I'm going to wrap that standing up, and I'm going to try and make the uh, length of my hook of the uh, barb stem, no barbs on the stem, same length as that grizzly. So I'm going to wrap back, watching the feather out. And now, 
From here, I'm going to come forward and I'm going to go ahead and clip off again. So one of the things that I guess I should have said and I didn't is notice that it's dull side up on my Grizzly, which was the first one, and it's dull side down on my Brown, which is the second. I want my barbules to go like this when I wrap them. And that's the one thing that I missed telling you as I tied in that Grizzly. So there you have it. So now I'm going to bring my thread right there to where that uh, silver starts. Again, using that as a reference. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either wrap both of them at the same time or wrap them individually. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to wrap mine and I'm going to start with the Grizzly first. And it's going to come right around and notice how it's right up against the gray. And I got one doing touching wraps, two and three. Now, one of the things that I want you to remember is the way that you're coming with your hackle. Make sure that the shiny side is back on every single wrap because remember I tied this doll side up. There we go. I kind of pushed them forward. So as I'm wrapping, I don't want to twist my hackle. I want to keep it going in the same direction. So now I'm going to come right in front of them wings. One. Two. And this is going to come out watching my thread bobbin. It didn't move. So there's my third wrap. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come straight up, touch that feather stem, and come straight down. I'm going to come straight up again, touch that feather stem, and come straight down. Notice how I can do that and not squunch any of my hackle out. And I didn't tie anything in that's going to lean out over the top of that eye. Straight up, touch your hackle, and straight down, not sideways. Be very careful that you do not go sideways with that thread. Reach in. Right along that shank. Touch the shank with your scissors and then go ahead and cut it. So now the same thing's going to happen here. I've got dull side back, so I want to wrap right there. Wiggle, wiggle. One, and I'm coming right there at that body of dubbing. Two, keeping that dull side back. Now three behind the wings. Now, as I cross under, this is where a lot of guys twist. Make sure that dull side is back. So, and be careful, your feather's getting sharp. One. There you go. So now what I'm going to do, since it slid out of my hands, I'm going to go ahead and use my hackle pliers. So I'm going to grab the top of this feather, and I'm going to start 100% over without pulling very hard because you can break your stem. One. Keep everything square, too, because if you don't, you'll twist and your barbules will stick all in, out in all different directions. Notice the color blending. That's three. Let's come in front of those wings without grabbing them. One, keeping that dull side back. Two, watching that silver. And now as I come up, I'm going to come straight up, touch, and straight back down. Shorten my thread a little. Straight up, straight back down. Let's do this one more time. Notice I've still got plenty of room there to actually create a nice head now because like I said earlier, I actually measured it, so let's pull everything back so we don't trap anything. And you want to kind of pull up with your fingers, and now let's wrap over that silver and then wrap back to your hackle. Don't wrap at that base. Use that same exact technique you use for the wings. I'm pulling in and pulling up. Why? Because that point wants to grab my thumb or my finger skin. But if I come up, I don't really grab it and get stuck. So I'm being very careful not to jam up my uh, hackle there. 
and I'm just tying straight back and I've covered my silver and I'm creating a nice tapered head but the bulbous area of the head I want almost the same diameter as my eye and why I just backed up is because I don't want my thread I want a little bit of hook right there behind that eye if you can see it and your thread will have a tendency once you start creating this taper to slide down somewhat and you don't want that so I'm just going ahead and creating this nice head if you consistently learn the head size all your flies will be just the exact same and the quality of your tie will be just the same as the one the last one you did so let's go ahead and create a nice whip one two three four and five slide parallel to your hook shank so you don't snag up your thread and create it to break from here let's cut and we've actually completed our fly since we pulled everything back let's kind of put it all in place and there you have a nice Adams proportioned exactly the way it should be and your wings will maintain that V shape even when they get wet because you're not using hackle at all to hold them apart you're using those thread wraps and notice when I wrapped my hackle, how straight it's sticking out away from that shank, and it's not laying flat over the eye or any of that other stuff. Here's the next thing. Notice how the tail is sticking straight out. Notice you can see the shank on each side of that tail. Um, it is not wrapped around that shank whatsoever. It is exactly on top, which is what you're looking for. If you tie with these proportions and techniques in mind each time, every one of your Catskill patterns, whether it's a PMD, a Blue Wing Olive, an Adams, I could go on and on, um, will all have the exact proportions on your wings, which you want. If you can see, you want your wings to be just that, that, that uh, little bit above your hackle. <coughs> on your wings... You're not wanting a really wide fat wing like a lot of guys tie because what happens is when you cast this fly, it wants to twirl because the wings are making it twirl like a helicopter, which then creates a wind knot in your tippet, not your fly or not your fly line or your leader, but your tippet will slowly get shorter as you see these, these uh, whirly bird knots start to, uh, it's like winding up a rubber band. So it's caused by those wings. By hackling on both sides of the wings, you're creating a nice wind block on the wings so the wind doesn't come in and grab those wings and make this fly twirl as you're drive casting it or if you're uh, false casting it until you get it where you want it. And that way, when you land on the water, your tip it will be absolutely straightened out and your fly will be much more presentable to your, to your prey. So with that, remember, keeping those wings within proportion. That is an Adams Catskill tied on a uh, 16, which in Missouri is the exact fly that you want to be fishing. Works excellent in all our Missouri trout parks and all of our blue ribbon water as long as it's presented correctly.